today's Monday, which means my meatless Monday. And uh, I've been sticking to this for a while because I'm trying to uh, make my the meat that I do have in the freezer, trying to spread it out and make it last. But not only that, when I substitute for my meat, it's usually with some kind of a, a grain or another vegetable. So it's very nutritious for you. And it saves you on money. And since our gardens are coming up, and we're going to be having quite a bit of zucchini, hopefully, because I planted a bunch of it. Uh, I'm going to be making some meatless meatballs. And I'm going to be making them out of zucchini. So they're going to be zucchini meatballs. And I'm really excited about it. So uh, there's just really not a whole lot of ingredients. As, as long as you even just have two medium-sized zucchinis, uh, you can probably pretty much make this recipe because I'm going to say you probably have most of the ingredients at home in your pantry already. The only one thing that you're going to need is you're going to need some uh, sauce, some uh, spaghetti sauce or marinara. And uh, you can, if you got some in the bottle, store bought, that makes it even more convenient or just uh, make up your own. And uh, I always keep canned tomatoes or um, store-bought crushed tomatoes, the big cans, because I use crushed tomatoes all the time, especially when I'm making any kind of Italian dish. So I just took a can of uh, crushed tomatoes with a little bit, about a half a cup of beef broth, and uh, put that together with uh, my Italian seasonings and garlic, and so right there I've already got my sauce ready. But this video is going to be about our zucchini meatballs. So I'm going to bring y'all closer and I'm going to show you the ingredients and then we'll get started on the recipe. Okay, let's talk about our ingredients real quick. This is two medium zucchinis and that's about one and a quarter pound. So two medium zucchinis. You need a cup of breadcrumbs. Uh, if you don't have breadcrumbs, some people keep the Italian breadcrumbs that you buy from the store. You can make your own. Um, you can use panko. You can use cracker or crushed cracker crumbs. But you need a cup. I've got a tablespoon of dried basil. If you have fresh basil, you're going to want about three tablespoons of fresh. So I've got a tablespoon of dried. I've got a couple big cloves of garlic minced up. I've got a half a teaspoon of salt, about a fourth a teaspoon of pepper, and I've got about, I don't know, one ounce or so of Parmesan cheese. And then of course olive oil. So that's all you need. Oh, and you need one egg. Can't forget the egg. So there's your ingredients. It's pretty easy. So let's get this started. I got my pan back here. Get y'all a little bit closer. I got my pan back here. And I'm going to turn the heat on. My sauce is getting ready, I think. So I'm just going to put me a tablespoon or so of olive oil in my pan. And I'm going to take my, my garlic cloves and I'm going to put them in here. Now you just want to saute them for just a, a few seconds. Because we know that garlic, it wants to burn pretty quick. So the process of this, since your zucchini is a replacement for your meat, you're going to be sauteing this in here with your garlic just like it was your meat like it was your ham your pork or your your beef or whatever so it's just pretty much the same process now when we get done sauteing it for a few minutes what it's going to do is going to bring the the juices out of that the water out of your zucchini and we'll cook it to the point that all of that liquid has dried up and then we'll take it out I'm not sure how many minutes that'll take, but we'll time it and see. 
So my garlic's cooking. Not cooking, but sautéing. I tell you, these meatless dinners have really helped us a lot. Not only in um, saving us money and stretching our meat budget, but nutrition-wise, too. Now, Danny's always been a meat and potato man, but I have yet to fix anything that he didn't enjoy, so um, I'm really glad of that because Danny's always been very easy to cook for. His mama was a good cook, and uh, they ate out everything out of the garden, so he's used to eating a lot of vegetables. So my garlic's been sautéing for about 30 seconds or so, probably longer than that. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw my zucchini in here. I'm just going to stir that around. Now we're just going to let this cook, like I said, cook the liquid out of it. But we're going to season this zucchini just like you would your meat. So I'm going to take my salt and my pepper. It's hard for me to do it that way. Salt and pepper. And my basil. Boy, that seems like a lot of basil. So that's how we're going to saute this up. So I'm going to watch this zucchini, and I'm going to time it and see how many minutes it takes to absorb, for it to cook long enough to absorb all the liquid. See, it's cooked down quite a bit, and uh, it's been cooking between five and seven minutes, you know, five or six minutes I've had it sautéing in here, and uh, most of the liquid is absorbed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to get me pot holder here. I may have to get two. What I'm going to do is dump all of this into this colander. I got me some new pot holders because mine were looking pretty rough. I don't never throw nothing away. I keep it forever. But I'm going to try to get it in here without making a mess. And what you want to do is take something and just kind of mash it down and get that liquid out of there. Now, you could put this in a thick, heavy um, paper towel and just kind of squeeze it out. But you can tell it's still hot, so... That may be too hot on your hands. So I'm just going to keep mashing this for a minute and uh, get all that liquid out. And mashing it's going to break it up a little bit. But I do want to get as much liquid out as I can. I think I've got quite a bit of it out. So I'm going to let this cool off just for a minute so I can handle it with my hands. And then we'll start making our meatballs. Now you want to turn your oven on 375. And I've got a cookie sheet here. And uh, I'm going to put foil on it to help with the cleanup. And I just really put quite a bit of olive oil down here. I'm going to try to keep it from sticking too bad. To help this along, to try to get it cooled off. So I stuck it in the freezer for, <laughs> for just a couple of minutes. And it got it cooled off really good. So now what we're going to add is our one egg. Our cup of breadcrumbs. And I'm going to hold off just a little bit. And then we've got our... Well, the recipe calls for one ounce. I just kind of eyeball and put what I think I'd want in it. A Parmesan cheese. And then you just want to mix this up. 
both of that feet up. Now I have to confess that I tasted of the zucchini while it was still warm, and it tastes really good. Um, of course, y'all know that Miss Lori added just a little more garlic to it because I have to taste that garlic to be satisfied. But the two cloves for most people would be plenty. But the basil, the garlic, and that little bit of salt and pepper, it just seasoned it. Now, if you use seasoned Italian uh, breadcrumbs, that's going to give it a little more uh, seasoning, too. So... I'm going to see, take my rings off, if these are going to hold up, and I feel like it's getting there. I don't want to put too much, sometimes that tends to dry them out. But I think they're going to hold up pretty good. So what you're going to do is you're just going to take and whatever size meatballs that you want. Just roll them up to your meatballs. You're going to cook this on 375 for... 20 to 25 minutes. Now I'm going to say till they're, you know, good and brown. Because there's nothing really raw here. It's all, I mean, besides it being not meat and being vegetable, it's all good. So, but the recipe calls for 20 to 25 minutes. Now, if you've got several people that's going to be eating this, you've got a big family, just double this recipe. Because it'll work. So I'm just going to keep making my meatballs. Now y'all, this is the first time I've ever done this recipe. So I'm really excited about it. And since I've already tasted what the zucchini tasted like while it was, you know, with all the seasoning and everything. And it was so good. So I'm thinking this is a keeper. So we get these out of the oven, we're going to put them in a saucepan with marinara and just warm it through, and then we're going to taste it. Okay, it's been 25 minutes, and we're going to take our meatballs out of the oven. They smell good. They're good and brown. I don't know if they're stuck on bottom or not, but we're fixing to check that out. I got my marinara here, and I'm kind of keeping it warm. Yeah, they're a little bit stuck. Not too bad, but they're brown on the bottom. And they're done. We're just going to take them. We're just going to put them down in the marinara I know y'all are saying <laughs> Miss Lori how can you pick that hot thing up let me tell you something Miss Lori worked in the school cafeteria for years and when you do that for a living you have no feeling in your fingertips I have no and this is the truth I don't have a whole lot of fingerprints left <laughs> Because of handling so much hot dishes and stuff. Now what I'm going to do is take me a spoon. I'm just going to kind of spoon some of that sauce over the top. And I'm just going to let this simmer for about five minutes. And let the zucchini meatball, or zucchini, I guess I don't know how you can call them meatballs, but zucchini meatballs 
and just let it kind of soak up some of that marinara. And then we're going to plate it and taste it. I'm going to get me a little plate of meatballs. We're going to taste them. They seem to be holding up pretty good. You know, I wasn't too sure if maybe, you know, they would fall apart, but it sure don't seem like it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit of Parmesan. And I've got some fresh basil here that I'm going to roll up. Cut me some slivers. I love fresh basil. I love it on top of pizza, spaghetti, just anything like that. So there's you some fresh basil. And there is the zucchini meatballs. So let's sit down and taste it. These babies. They smell good. The texture is really like a meatball. They're not falling apart. Yes. You know, and I know y'all think I'm <laughs> lost my mind. And sometimes I think I have. But if I was blindfolded and somebody said, Taste this meatball and tell me if it's any good. I don't think I know right off the bat that it wasn't meat. There is enough seasoning and um, everything in here just comes together. And I'm telling you, I don't think Mr. Brown's going to know the difference either. But this is a keeper. So if y'all like the Meatless Mondays, there's a playlist down the description box. There's several ladies that are doing it, and they have got some wonderful recipes. We've got Linda from the Little Homestead. She's from New Zealand and such a sweet lady. We've got Leslie from Farmer's Pastures Wife, and uh, her and her husband are such a a delight to watch and we have Miss Vicki from Vicki's Country Home who is uh, she's more like a sister to me she's the one that got me started really in YouTube so y'all go check Miss Vicki out at Vicki's Country Home and then we got Tammy from Little Jordan Farm great lady she is so smart about uh, medicinal herbs and plants so y'all need to go check her out so I'm going to have the playlist down below. And uh, there's several, several meatless dishes there if you're interested. So y'all have got to try this. Especially this summer when y'all start getting a lot of zucchini. Because I'm telling y'all, I like my meat. Don't get me wrong. Now I'm a veggie girl too. But these are delicious. So you can't go wrong with them. So I hope y'all like this recipe and I hope y'all try it. So I really think you're going to like it. So y'all go watch the other ladies and their recipes, and uh, y'all come back and see us. God bless.